Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Comic Book Users. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Cover in the Co-Captain's Chair from Austin, Texas. Mr. Scott Berry, what's going on, Scott? Oh, this and that. Just trying to stay out of trouble. There you go. I Greetings hear you. I want to thank Scott for uh, helping join me on this little uh, quick look at a uh, kind of like a part two from an episode we did a week or so ago where we looked at the debut of Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu, and Marvel Special Edition. That was number 15. Here we got number 16. So again, Jim Starlin. Great issue. Love that artwork, right? Awesome. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, awesome so, cover. Yeah. Uh, I, I almost wish that Jim worked a little longer on the uh, Shang-Chi comic once they moved over and gave him his own series. But we did get Paul Galassi shortly thereafter, right? So I guess we can't complain all that much. And Doug Mensch did a pretty decent job on the writing. You know, yeah. I, I, he stuck, I mean, what, he he came in about, what, maybe five, ten issues into it, and he stuck yeah. to, through to the end of it. Yeah, and, yeah. And even after Galassi, we got Mike Zeck for a long period of time, and Mike he Zeck. did a nice job. Gene too. Day, I think, was was pretty good, too. Yeah, yeah. I always really liked, no matter who was drawn this comic, I always really liked the writing. I think that there was just a different flavor to the Shang-Chi comic. It was more kind of like British spy stuff, right? Mixed with martial arts. It just kind of really worked for me. I really, Absolutely. yeah. I think it helps when you, when you have a, a, like the same writer on there for a while. Uh, I mean, th yeah, I like to keep the same artist too, but you know, I, I think the con as for, for continuity sake and, you know, the flow of the series, just having the same writer just, yeah and you know kudos to doug mensch too because he really took what uh jim starlin and steve engelhart were kind of when they created this character they they really took it and ran with it keeping the original spirit which i thought yeah, was absolutely really really cool so i just got this one recently i'm going to be a little careful with it because it's an old, old book but here we have uh the opening splash page and again it's steve engelhart jim starlin al milgram was the inker here and then you get tom uh, karakowski right. Um, Linda Lehman and Roy Thomas, of course, is the editor. So this starts the whole storyline of uh, Shang-Chi finally finds out that uh, his father, Fu Manchu, is really not a good dude, right? So now yeah. the war begins between the two and one of his best friends growing up who trained alongside him, who's basically Midnight, and he, he was uh, left uh, as an orphan and scarred. And when, when Fu Manchu found him and, of course, trained him to be a killing machine, just like Zhang Chi, right? So they grew up together. But now, of course, they are at odds because Midnight is going to stay loyal to Fu Manchu. So here we go through this. Uh, here he is in Central Park in New York City. He gets attacked by a bunch of hoods. Of course, we know what happens there. That's not going to that's not going to turn out well for the hoods. And uh, really nice job oh, by no. Starlin doing the action here. I just, I mean, Jim Starlin is just such a visionary. I comic. love when they do those kind of panels like that. Uh, you know, where it's almost like, uh, like kind of a flip book sort of thing. You yep. know, where it just you, you see a little bit of uh, pro progression in the action in each panel. Almost like can make an animation, right? Because you've got the each each page is like a is like one second. That's like a right. Flip. It's almost like that. Yeah. Yeah. So from here we yeah, go into for battle get, scene. Yeah. We get the uh, kind of the origin story of the Midnight character. And again, they show him being taken under the wing by Fu Manchu. So you get a little bit of that origin story here. And then as they grow up alongside yeah, each other. Story. Yeah, it's just, it's a, a, you know, and we've seen this in other comics throughout the years where you have these two characters that kind of grew up together, trained together, and then they're forced to battle, right? Because they're on opposing sides. So... And as we take it through, we leading up to uh, midnight, sending a message to Shang Chi, saying that you know there's going to be kind of a throwdown, and then it actually happens. So, and at first, you know, Shang Chi doesn't really want to fight him because obviously he's his best friend, and Midnight realizes that, but he's like, you know what, you you're opposing the master, right? Who's uh, Fu Manchu, and this is a really close fight here. I mean, they they fight throughout the whole rest of the book. And it goes back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, you're finally saying, gee, has uh, Shang-Chi met his match, even though we're only in the second second issue ever of seeing him. And, yeah. and we've seen some tough tests for him through the years. Uh, but this is a this is a this is a close one. So here they're battling above the, uh, the rooftops of New York City. Again, good action drawn by these two guys, oh, Al and uh, 
Starlin, and I love the last couple of pages. So you see it, it almost looks like Midnight's going to win this particular battle. But Shang-Chi is just as smart as he is agile and powerful. And in the end, he basically kicks him off this uh, the roof of this building. Right. And uh, he winds up coming back up. So there you see at the top of the skyscraper. Oh, yeah. And they're at the top fighting. And then uh, Shang just reaches over and knocks him off. And it's a terrible way to go. But on the last page, as he's falling down, he winds up, his cloak winds up getting caught on the hook. Right. And breaks his neck. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, what a way to go. I'm like, oh, yeah. man. It's like, and never to be seen again, right? Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think they ever. He was never him. seen. Uh, he was referred to multiple times throughout the series, though. I mean, he was remembered, you know. Um, yeah. Apparently, he had a big impact early in Shang-Chi's life, you know, as he was coming up as he was a kid and maturing to adulthood. Kind of weird when you think about it that they brought him in so early in the storyline and killed him off right away because I think he would have been a great recurring character. Yeah, you you got to wonder about that. What the what the thinking was there? It did seem like, yeah, they could have given him a few more storylines before they killed him off. Yeah, like uh, what was the name of the other guy with the with the blade with the blade as a hand? I forget his name. Um, um, oh, geez, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. Uh, ah, razor Razor away. Fist, right? Razor Fist. Thank you, thank you. God, getting the oh, old. They originally right? killed off <laughs> Razor Fist and they brought him back. So you know why not bring Midnight back? I don't know. That's true. I, but a cool issue. I, I really enjoyed that series a lot. Uh, I, I, it's only in in the last few years though that I've actually read it, like all the way through, start to finish. What, what, what did it go up to? What was the final issue number? Uh, One twenty five was the final issue. Uh, it ran about ten years. Yeah. yeah, I think I have the first 100, I think, or pretty damn close to it. I probably should just complete the whole series. If you're that close, you might as well. Yeah, um, it, yeah it does get a little choppy toward the end there. And I, uh, I, I, the art, uh, Gene Day, uh, who was kind of like the last reg regular artist on the series, he had actually died maybe less than a year before the series ended and they had to replace him on yeah. on the art chores and the art the art's a little it, it's not the best uh, those last few issues but yeah yeah that, i know i remember when i was looking at some of the issues and looked at the covers and stuff like the end of the covers suffered a bit too because i think the covers on most of these are generally very very well done um but yeah it's like it's i don't have that much further to go and it might be worth just completing the whole run yeah it's kind of nice to finish it off and i i think it ends it ends pretty well but yeah I, it was it was a great series uh sometimes uh it's it's good to end a series you know just for a series to have a, a beginning a middle and end and, and and you move on yeah you know and I, I know in the world of comic books we're used to having like characters that 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 are around forever you know that, that have yeah. been around for 50 60 70 80 years you know and, yeah. and yeah. Never ends. but and then you got those a black and white comic deadly hands of kung fu right so there's a whole bunch of issues with them in there as well so and i don't have a lot of those i only have a few of those but there's tons of those too i i've got i'm pretty close to having all of those i think i'm missing four issues of that but they're all kind of pricey they're i know two of them are very pricey yeah um because you had like the first appearances of like uh the jack of hearts is in one of them yep yep and you got the white and, and the thing too. is when you get like a first appearance in one of those uh magazines well they had lower print runs right, right. standard format comics so you know if you got a lot of people seeking them out yeah they're gonna they're gonna spike even more yeah for sure for sure there's not a lot of them out there so cool well there you have it everybody so uh if you have this issue if you've read it Put some comments down below what you think of it. If you haven't gotten it, it's well worth getting. It's one of the oh, yeah. one of the few that Jim Starlin worked on, so that makes it worthwhile right there. So uh, thanks, to Scott, for joining me on this one. We'll be seeing him soon. Always a and, pleasure. Uh, visit us on the web at www. Oh no, that's the that's the sea of tranquility. What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you do the 
this all the time. I'm Scott. not the only one with the olds today. <laughs> you know, I know. So thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. If you are a Sea of Tranquility fan watching, you know where to go over there. I don't need to say that. But anyway, thanks to Scott. I'm Pete Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon here on Comic Book Geezers. Take care.